Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Siddharth Zarabi and joining me now is Pratik Agarwal, the CFO of HCL Technologies. Welcome to the show. Um, Pratik, your quarterly results have beaten analysts' expectations. Take us through uh, the numbers and the challenges that you uh, saw during the quarter. Hi, Siddharth. Thank you for having me today. And uh, yeah, our numbers have been pretty good uh, in this quarter. Uh, we started the year off uh, in Q1, uh, which was uh, lower than expectations, uh, our own expectations. And uh, uh, second quarter has been reasonably good, but the best is yet to come because uh, the third and uh, fourth quarter, uh, like we said right at the beginning, the second half is going to be much better than the first half. That is how the reality has eventually uh, played out. Uh, our guidance of organic growth in the services business, uh, the revised guidance is at 4 to 5%. And mm -hmm. the ask rate to meet that guidance is a CQGR of uh, 2.6 to 3.8%. And uh, those numbers are very good growth in any environment, especially in this a uh, slightly challenged macroeconomic uh, environment that we are going through. And that is predicated on the large deals, large the biggest deal ever that we announced uh, in August, uh, the Verizon deal. And uh, the total deal wins in this quarter is uh, 4 billion, uh, of which 2.1 is from that deal and uh, 1.9. So it's a tale of two halves there as well. Uh, is is also uh, coming from other deals. Uh, when it comes to the guidance, and you mentioned that, uh, why is it that it is lower? Because you also said that the second half uh, will be uh, better. Elaborate a bit more on that. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a tale of two halves. First half uh, was decidedly much lower than uh, what we had expected, to be honest, uh, right at the beginning of the year. Uh, and uh, that is entirely what has driven the uh, cut of uh, about two percentage points uh, from the lower end of the earlier guidance that we had given. Uh, so what is done in the first half, nobody can change that. Uh, but we are very uh, confident and very uh, eagerly looking forward to what uh, the next two quarters uh, bring to us. Since you spoke about uh, large uh, uh, deals, what is your outlook as far as uh, spending is concerned uh, in most of the advanced economies, particularly the United States? I think uh, the nature of the deals have changed in the last year or so. Uh, and we have been calling it out. Others in the industry have also been calling it out. The discretionary spend, which was the larger part uh, in the prior two years, uh, let's say calendar 21 and calendar 22. Uh, yes. Now the story has changed in the last one year. Uh, it is now more of cost optimization deals, which is usually combined with the business transformation uh, of its own. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the focus is more on ROI for the customers and uh, uh, the the sort of uh, the work is longer tenure, like five years, six years, or even beyond in some cases. The Verizon deal we announced is a six-year deal. Uh, and therefore, it takes that much time to sort of convert to revenue. Uh, so that's the nature of the uh, deal change that has happened. So overall, uh, your numbers and what you are telling me seems to suggest that the uh, overall macroeconomic outlook will remain uh, strained and tough for the near term? For the near term, yes. It's uh, always difficult to call out when the tide will change. Uh, but uh, at least we don't see it happening today or uh, in the quarter that just went past. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe not even in this quarter that we are going through right now. Uh, but hopefully soon after that, uh, but difficult to call out. Yeah. Would it be right to say that uh, because of the strong uh, deal uh, pipeline that you have, 
some of the translation in terms of revenue will be visible more in FY25. See, the exit rate that we will be at based on this CQGR that I talked about or the guidance that we talked about at an overall level uh, will be seriously good because, you know, the, the largest deal we talked about is contributing to two months in the current quarter in Q3. And then okay. the March quarter Q4 will be the full three month. Uh, so that itself deal will have a 50% growth year on uh, quarter on quarter. Right. So, and, and that number will be a seriously good number and uh, should bode well for our uh, growth in, uh, in FI 25 as well. Uh, so, but we'll get, that when we get to that, uh, we still have six months to close the current fiscal. Talk a bit more about your um, EBIT uh, margins. What are the estimates that you are working with? So uh, we have the we have maintained the guidance of eighteen to nineteen percent, but uh, as we have been telling all our investors, uh, we are very laser focused on getting back to the nineteen to twenty percent uh, range. Uh, which used to be our uh, pre-COVID uh, uh, average, right? So if you go back to FY20 or even FY21, both the years were 19.6% uh, EBIT uh, margin. So that is what we aspire to get back to. Obviously, this year has been a slower year by all uh, yardsticks and uh, uh, slower on the margin also, therefore. Uh, but uh, we really want to get back to 19 to 20 Okay, let's turn uh, our attention to headcount. Overall, uh, the IT industry viewers, uh, by one estimate, uh, has shed more than 25,000 uh, jobs. Uh, and this is reflective of what's happening, a bit of overhiring also uh, in the COVID uh, bump. But for HCL Tech, uh, Pratik, this, uh, the numbers suggest this is the second consecutive quarter of a headcount decline. And uh, your headcount has declined by almost... 2,300 in the second quarter. What will the trend be? Uh, and what do you have to say about attrition levels? So the trend for the next two quarters will certainly be up in the sense 26 to 3.8% growth doesn't come uh, without uh, additional uh, people because in the services business, uh, there is a certain degree of uh, linearity. Uh, in the first half, which is the Q1 and Q2 you referred to. We we did drop headcount a little bit, uh, about roughly 1% uh, compared to a 221,000. 2,300 is just over, uh, slightly shade over uh, 1%. Uh, so that was necessitated because the hiring of freshers that we did in the few quarters uh, before that. <clears throat> also, in the in the last two quarters and before they've been trained and they're now ready to uh, join the delivery workforce and sort of deliver to our clients. Uh, so that's the reason. And the attrition has also sequentially been coming down every quarter on the trot. Uh, we are now down to about 14 odd percent, uh, uh, some decimal place. Uh, but uh, uh, that also means that the number of people we have to hire for backfilling uh, attrition also has come down. Uh, so all these factors and uh, next two quarters will certainly uh, see an uptake. Uh, another IT major has said that it does not see the possibility of hiring any freshers uh, going forward in the near term. Uh, if that question was posed to you, what would you say? No, so we are hiring freshers uh, this year uh, in the first half including this quarter, we have hired uh, 5,000 freshers. This quarter was uh, 3,600 uh, plus people. Uh, the last quarter was around 1,600, if I remember the number right. So 5,000 people we have already hired in the first half. Second half will be another close to 5,000. So the number for the full year is 10,000. Where will... Uh, uh future growth come from in terms of the revenue mix, the geographies and and the business verticals that will contribute to future growth? Simple answer, Siddharth. 
it's uh, america's uh, and uh, telecom vertical that's where i said okay uh, and um, the, just from a you know granularity of the verizon work what kind of work will you be doing for them so uh, it's uh, managed network services uh, now uh, that basically means and this is for verizon's customers right so it's uh, not internal it work as predominantly most of the industry work tends to be internal uh, to the customers themselves this is we working for you know 1500 odd uh, customers of verizon uh, verizon continues to handle the front end uh, of the work in terms of sales and uh, solutions and all that uh, we bring in the uh, delivery side uh, and uh, you know even helping on the pre sales etc so that uh, you know as a partnership we go and win more because the numbers that we have announced are really the deal inked as of today and it has a go to market component with the uh, with our business partner to go and uh, you know sell more to newer clients uh, as well so hopefully that will add uh, on top so that's the nature of the partnership we have absolutely and it's an important point uh, that i wanted you to elaborate because uh, 15 20 years back uh, uh, companies from overseas were uh, doing that work in india and now indian companies doing that for big story uh, uh, brands uh, really uh, since we are talking about uh, uh, this in the telecom space uh, do you see further opportunities uh, within america or in other geographies as well for similar kind of work absolutely yes uh, and and you are absolutely right uh, we are doing that uh, work in europe as well and uh, we continue to work on deals in the pipeline which are uh, on both continents okay any plans uh, for a buyback you already declared the interim dividend but uh, are you considering a buyback no i think our uh, preference uh, has been uh, very regular quarterly dividend of the type of uh, 12 rupees uh, per quarter i think we have received very resounding uh, approval and uh, appreciation from our uh, shareholders uh, whenever i meet them every quarter uh, whichever ones i meet every uh, over a period uh, they have all appreciated that and uh, for a stock which is say 1250 or thereabouts 12 rupees is like you know almost 1% per quarter and up in the last quarter uh, by by whatever the extra needs to be so i think it's been well appreciated and uh, we'll continue on that and that's the spirit in which we increased the 10 to 12 in this quarter because this 10 uh, rupees per quarter trajectory we had set a couple of years back in october of 2021 so it was uh, time to uh, go to the next uh, level okay uh, that's a good point uh, before we wind up the conversation i just want to pick up a couple of sort of more immediate issues one is um, currency volatility what are you seeing likely uh, that will happen and uh, any particular strategies that you are deploying ah uh, interesting question sidarth so uh, you know there are factors on both sides so you know rupee the rupee has been around 83 8325 let's say for the last uh, month or so uh, obviously in the near term there are factors which can push it a uh, little higher than 8325 uh, but uh, in the medium to long term i actually expect that uh, it should start stabilizing and maybe even appreciate at some point in time because uh you know the jp morgan including the uh, government indian government securities in the emerging markets uh, bond index uh, to my mind is a big uh, thing uh, and it might happen over 10 months on 1% increase every month kind of a thing starting i think june 
so yeah it is a little nine months away kind of thing uh, but uh, it will be attracting estimates are around 23 24 billion dollars billion dollars even if it happens over 10 months it is still like 2 to 2 and a half billion every month uh, so that can have a, a good effect from an indian uh, economy perspective of uh, uh, reducing the strain on the rupee and uh, that is the context i said there could be times when it might appreciate or i don't see it depreciating at the rate that it has historically because there are others also looking at including indian bonds uh, into their indices absolutely and on a macro level uh, with uh, inflation cooling and growth up uh, india is in a sweet spot when it comes to uh, macro economy and uh, before yes. i let you go just one quick point uh, and this is related to what's happening in uh, israel and gaza in any way are you impacted by the ongoing conflict and do you have Uh, any plans in this regard uh we are not really impacted in any meaningful way uh, the only thing is we do have some employees there uh, about whom we are obviously concerned and taking the steps that uh, we should then we are doing that uh, thankfully everything continues to be good uh, with those employees and otherwise so uh yeah it's a situation that we'll keep uh, watching and monitoring like like whatever happens uh, like that in any other part of the world uh we hope that uh, things get better soon absolutely and this is an important point for uh, all companies particularly indian it companies viewers uh, our companies are global they have footprints all over the world practically and offices in all manner of locations and when there is any geopolitical risk uh india uh, and indian companies have to uh, think about it uh, the government has already launched a program to get back our people and uh, hopefully things will stabilize pradeep thank you very much for your time uh, as always uh, with us to help decode uh, your recent quarterly performance and the outlook for the future with that it's a wrap viewers on this analysis of hcl tech uh, quarterly results if you've been thank you very much for watching thank you sadar have a great day If you like the video do like comment share and subscribe